Hey, what's up guys, it is Clay. Today I want to talk about INFJs and specifically kind of how to find your calling or purpose as an INFJ. This seems like a common topic in the whole INFJ crowd, in my opinion. A lot of us have this kind of almost obsession with like finding that thing that we should be doing, finding that, that one path that we should be following. So it seems to me from my observation that INFJs are most happy when they kind of have the freedom to pursue their interests, um, their ideas, uh, their own goals, sort of move towards that thing that they're really passionate about. And hopefully, as far as like a career or job, um, if you're interested in something that you can make money at, that's actually the best situation. There's some other things I think that are important, like you know, finding a way to help people, for example. But something I've kind of noticed about INFJs is sometimes we can get a little stuck. I think a lot of it has to do with self-image. You know, we can be really good at things, but we don't recognize that in ourselves. Um, sometimes we can have like low self-confidence. Sometimes we can be perfectionists to the point of, you know, nothing's good enough, so we don't even really start. You know, rather than starting and doing something pretty well, we won't even do it because it's not perfect. And so I wanted to give a few ideas today on how I think that you can kind of get started. If you're stuck in a bit of a rut that way, you can kind of give yourself a bit of a kick to move towards that thing that will, you know, ultimately fulfill you and possibly give you a little bit more purpose in your life, which I think can really improve your outlook on life as an INFJ. So as I said, I think an INFJ is going to be most happy when they have the freedom to pursue their interests, uh, their ideas, and kind of do that thing that they want to do. Um, most INFJs are idealists. So that means, you know, they have all these ideas sitting inside your head, all these things that you want to do, all these ways that you think you could make the world better. So if you can do something that kind of implements those ideas, um, I think that can be really fulfilling. So the first thing I want to talk about here is like happiness. And maybe that sounds a bit vague or cliche, um, how to get happiness. But, you know, I've been thinking about this for a while. <laughs> and I think for me, the more free I am, uh, the happier I am. So I've kind of come to the conclusion that maybe happiness is freedom. Freedom to do what you want to do. Freedom to not be told what to do. So if you have to go to a job all day long that you dislike and you hate, you know, that's kind of the opposite of freedom. Maybe you need the money, so you have to go. Um, you're kind of, kind of locked in this little prison, and I think that can really rob happiness. So I think the first step um, for a lot of INFJs, or for me specifically, is to get freedom in your life. And that kind of means to do that thing that you want to do. So you're kind of controlling your own destiny, I guess you could say. So I honestly believe that as an INFJ, if you don't allow yourself to find freedom, you will be possibly depressed. And I think that I was like that for a number of years. So I've suffered from depression for a long time, off and on. And at certain times in my life, it's been much worse than other times. And so that's why I was saying, I think for me, I don't think it is a chemical imbalance thing in my brain. Like, you know, I need, I don't have enough serotonin or dopamine or all these things. Uh, it's almost more like, more like situational depression. And I think it's directly related to my circumstances. If I feel like I am achieving, you know, my potential, I feel so much better, if that makes sense. And I, I don't like being feeling trapped or locked in to things that I don't like. So that could be anything. That could be jobs, being locked into jobs you hate, having to hang around with people that you don't want to hang around with, being locked into relationships that are maybe abusive, damaging, or you know, almost like sort of like vampire type relationships where they're just like sucking energy out of you. Um, not having the right amount of time to spend with yourself and work on your passions and recharge. I think that's really important. All of these things together kind of go into creating freedom, I think, in my opinion. So let's say, as an INFJ for a minute, that you have a thing that you want to do. You haven't figured it out yet, though, um, how to do it. Maybe you're stuck in something 
that you don't want to be doing and there's just some reason you feel like you can't proceed. And I wanted to talk about this book really quick that I read a long time ago. It was called The War of Art, Stephen Pressfield. He's written a number of books, actually. I'd recommend some of those. If you're the type of person that's kind of often, there's this thing that you really want to do, but you just haven't been able to do it. Um, the War of Art is a really good book. And he talks about this thing in the book called The Resistance and how everybody kind of has this resistance that they're fighting. And if you can overcome the resistance, you can achieve your potential. But if you don't overcome the resistance, it's almost like um, it will just own you and slowly consume you and um, basically stop you from fulfilling your dreams, I guess. All right, so what is the resistance? Basically, Stephen Pressfield says, the resistance is the voice in your head that says this. I'm going to read this quote from him. It basically tells you, you're a loser, you're a bum, a worthless waste of oxygen. Look at you. Do you imagine that someone like you could produce something original, something of quality, something that anyone else would care about? What ideas do you have that haven't been done a thousand times before and better than you could ever dream of doing them? So every INFJ I know, almost without fail, is really good at something, whether that be like art or business or something really mechanical. I know about three or four INFJs in real life and all of them are just really good at something. But another common thread amongst these people that I know is it's almost like they don't see that in themselves. They don't recognize the scarcity or the value of that thing. It's almost like they're so used to themselves that it's not special to them. It's just like no big deal. It's like almost like breathing and other people have a hard time with breathing, but you just breathe without thinking. It's like it's hard to actually see that as a valuable, unique skill. So, you know, in, in, in the case of art, like say, so they say there's an INFJ that was just a really excellent, um, good, really good at drawing. And, you know, they might just draw stuff that's just mind boggling, but because it's so innate and natural feeling to them, they don't see it as valuable. Um, I have things like this in my own life. There's things that I've always just been able to do well. Um, and I, it's only recently that I've been realizing, you know, this is a skill that I should foster. Other people will ask, how do you do that? And I'm like, I don't know. It's just, it's, it seems simple. You could do it too. And I'm always walking around telling people, you can do this too. It's really easy. And it's possible that they can, but it's also possible that maybe it's just one of those things that I'm innately good at. Everybody's good at certain things, and so I think that everybody else should do it too. When in reality, maybe if I valued myself more and valued that skill, I might see the fact that, no, this is actually something that's unique about me. So another thing that seems to go along with that is a lot of INFJs are so perfectionist that even though they're really good at stuff, or really amazing at something, like way better than everybody else, to them, they still feel like inadequate, like they haven't quite achieved it, so they don't do it. Um, so it could be like, say, an amazing writer, um, writes really good stuff, has the capability to write a book, let's say, and it could be really good, lots of great ideas, but because, you know, this INFJ doesn't feel as good as maybe their favorite writer who's been writing for years and years and years. It's almost like they just like toss out what they've written and, and don't value it and never, never take the next step to actually putting it out in the world. So that's one example. So an example in my own life. So I've made videos for a long time, probably 10 years. And in the past, I used to spend a long time making one video. So, you know, I used to make um, documentaries. I actually had this documentary series for a while called Passionate Nobodies. I haven't done one in a while, but what I would do is find some really interesting person and do a little mini documentary on them. And I had a few of them end up as finalists in film festivals, and that was really cool. Um, but the thing I noticed about those videos is it would take me like three months to make one short documentary film. And if you want to see them, actually, you can just go back in time on this YouTube channel and you'll see some of them. I think I have some of the stuff posted. But the interesting thing is I was being such a perfectionist on a lot of this stuff. Like if you go look at, I did one on an origami artist, actually. He's a guy that I know in Kelowna, BC, where I'm from. 
but he's actually one of the best in the world at origami. So that actually took quite a bit of work to produce that, that film. I came to this place where I realized I just wasn't making enough stuff. And one, one film or one video every three or four months just wasn't enough. And, and so these talking videos that I'm doing are sort of me attempting to break through that perfectionism thing. Because I think, no, I need to make a perfectly produced film in order to release it. <clears throat> and these talking videos are sort of an attempt to lay down my perfectionism, turn the camera on and kind of just talk to the camera. Like, could these all be really highly produced documentary topics where I go and interview people? Maybe I find experts and I shoot all kinds of other footage to illustrate the ideas. Yes, I could do that. But then it would take me months and months to produce one video. So just an example from my own life that these videos basically I'm trying to get rid of that perfectionism and actually just put something out there in the world. And hopefully that will help somebody that otherwise I wouldn't have helped if I wouldn't even have made it out of my own perfectionism. So I've noticed with a lot of INFJs, they're kind of stuck in that place. They haven't started doing that thing that they really want to do. And it's almost like they don't know what to do. You know what I mean? It's sort of like, what should I do? I, I don't know what I'm good at. It's almost like they haven't fully got the, the self-awareness to actually identify those unique, amazing skills inside themselves. So I have sort of five questions here that I've come up with to kind of get your mind working on sort of how to identify those valuable things inside yourself, those things that you have to offer to the world. So those, those things that you can create a business around, for example, or a way that you can create some value that hopefully eventually people will pay you for. So the first question I want to ask is something that I have stole from somewhere else. I've actually heard it a few other places, but um, it always stuck with me. So the question is, what is your unfair advantage? So do you ever get like repeatedly complimented on something that you do? Maybe multiple people are always telling you, wow, you're really good at that. How did you do that? Or maybe something that you see as like super easy and straightforward and people often are confused, like how did you do that? Or can you teach me how to do that? Or they're asking you questions about how you do something that maybe just feels completely intuitive and natural to you. So this unfair advantage, I think maybe, I mean, I can't say that everybody has one, but it seems to me that most INFJs have some kind of unfair advantage. And if you can look inside yourself and identify that thing, it does take a little bit of self-awareness because it's sort of like you yourself aren't gonna actually see it as being a difficult thing, but other people view it as difficult. If you can identify that thing, you're immediately going to have something that you can share with people that is valuable. So if you have something like that, it's really great to identify because that is the first step to finding out what you have to offer. What is your unfair advantage? So number two, the ne next question I wanted to ask is like, what do you love to do? What is that thing that you've always done? Maybe even when you were a kid. You know, it's funny, when you're a kid, you don't do things often because you have to. So for example, maybe you really loved horses when you were young, or maybe you really loved photography. Actually, that's one thing that I've always loved. When I was 10 years old, I used to actually read camera manuals believe it or not. I, and I would read like Canon camera and Nikon camera brochures and I'd learn about all the cameras and what they all did. And so like, you know, what is f-stop and what is the shutter speed? And you know, what is ISO? And back then it was actually all film. There wasn't a lot of digital stuff. This was probably like, you know, the early to mid nineties. And I got my first SLR camera, film camera back then. And I would just walk around and take pictures of stuff. So it's something that I just like to do intuitively. Um, you know, another thing I really liked was drums and music. So I played a lot of music in my life as well. I used to play drums in a lot of different bands. And I just loved playing music. It's something I've always really liked. Um, I also really liked the, like, the outdoors. So I actually grew up kind of in the country and we lived on like 20 acres and I just basically, we had a couple of big dogs and I would just roam around in the woods with my cameras and uh, you know, just 
enjoying myself in nature. So it's like, it's funny, if you look at what did you like to do when you were a kid? Like, what do you like to do now? What is something that you really love? What is something that you would do for free and doesn't feel like a job? And in a lot of ways, this might be different than your unfair advantage from, from number one. Your unfair advantage is sort of that thing that maybe you're just naturally really good at. Um, and hopefully you love that thing. So hopefully these two things are the same. And if you can kind of cross-reference the things that you're really good at with the things you love, that is a really good place to start. Sometimes you might be really good at stuff that you don't really love. And so that's an interesting thing to keep an eye on too. I mean, that's not the end of the world. Maybe you can still combine those two things in some way. Like let's say you are a photographer. I'll use that as another example. So you like taking pictures. But let's say you're also really good at building stuff out of wood or metal. Um, you can combine those two things and now you're building things for photographers, maybe props or like tools or equipment. Um, and now you sort of combine those two things and now you kind of have this really specific knowledge, I guess, into this really specific area. So there's a guy named Naval, I really like him. You can find him on Twitter, I think it's just at Naval. But he talks about this thing called specific knowledge and he thinks everybody has some kind of specific knowledge. It'd be that thing that you can't be taught easily. It's not like you can just go to school and learn that specific thing. So it'd be, you know, you have all this depth of knowledge in one area and a depth of knowledge in another area and you kind of combine those two things and you have this area that would be really hard for anybody else to compete with you in. So that's again your unfair advantage. So another thing that I think is really important for an IFJ, another question you can ask yourself is how can you help people or help the world with your unfair advantage and the things that you love? If you take something that you really love, is there anything in that that you can now turn around and use to help people. I think that INFJs specifically, they kind of need to help people. And I've talked about this in other videos, but if an INFJ can get a job or a career where they're helping people, I think immediately they're gonna be much more fulfilled. If you are an INFJ and you're in a job that is not helping people, I think you're gonna be less fulfilled. And if you're in a job that is actually harming people, I think that you could be downright miserable. So I think it's really important to try to identify how can you help the world? Is there something that you can do really well, like your unfair advantage, that you can actually help people? I've said this in my other video. I think INFJs, they're often, well, a lot of the stuff you read online, they try to like pigeonhole us into these really specific jobs. But I think personally that INFJs have so many different skills. You know, INFJ is just a personality type. It is, it is not your skills. Um, it's different. You know, there's nature and nurture, right? And it's, it's debatable really how much of like me is my nature and how much of me is my nurture. Nurture being the things I've been taught, the way I was uh, raised, my upbringing, um, my education. Personally feel that trying to pigeonhole a personality type into a specific job is maybe a little short-sighted. I think INFJs can do a lot of different jobs. So another question you can ask yourself to kind of find that calling inside of you is, is there any information that you have right now that you wished you had when you were young? Is there some pursuit of knowledge you have undertaken over the last 10 years or however long, uh, 20 years, depending on how old you are? Um, it could be short. Maybe there's something that you've learned in the last two years. Like what? What have you learned that you wished you could share with your younger self that would make your life a lot easier? Maybe to avoid some massive mistake you made or some shortcoming or something that you didn't see that it took a long time to learn. You know, so one example of that might be, you know, I think a lot of INFJs are susceptible to kind of falling victim to toxic people, especially like narcissists and stuff like that. You know, I have learned so much about narcissism over the last few years that I wish that I could teach myself that when I was like 18. And I think I could have avoided a lot of pain in my life if I would have known a little bit about that, known how to set proper boundaries, how to almost like value myself more that I can stand up to, you know, narcissistic individuals. So that's one example. And you know, to be honest, 
a lot of these videos that I'm doing are things that I wish that I had known when I was younger and now I do know them so I'm kind of just sharing them in hopes that somebody else finds some value in that. So the fifth question I have here to get your mind working is, you know, what complicated thing exists out there that you have the ability to make simple? And this is a great question for business. Is there anything that you know about that to other people appears very complex and almost stressful um, and you have the ability to clarify that, to make it simple, to explain things to people, to help them get what they need? Because one of the number one rules of business in my opinion, so I run an online business that sells things online and that's actually one of the main things I've learned. How can I take this complex information and make it dead simple? How can I make a 10-year-old understand this? And that's actually how I'm always writing the information on this website to sell things. How can I write this in such a way that a complete idiot can understand it? I know it's not nice to call people idiots, but that's how I view it. Like, how can I write this so that somebody who is definitely not smart will completely understand this? Like a grade two writing level. And I think there's quite an art in being able to take complex information and rewrite it in a very simple, easy to understand way. You know, like you see these people that use really big words and try to make themselves look super intelligent and smart. I don't think there's anything artful or really intelligent about that. Um, like, you know, everybody's confused, nobody knows what you're talking about. If you can make information simpler rather than more complicated, people will pay you for that information. So let me give you an example here. I haven't really talked much about my online business on here, but you know, why not? So I did do one video on how to start an online business, but I didn't actually talk about what my business was. Um, so my business, it's very obscure, and a lot of people think it's funny when I, when I bring it up, but, um, ponds and water gardens. So like water features in your backyard. Um, so if you build like a koi pond with fish in it, uh, you know, you need to buy all this equipment. So my dad likes building ponds. I was helping him build one years ago one time. And I remember thinking there's a lot that goes into this, like pumps, filters, there's these skimmers, waterfalls, and all these different pipes, UV clarifiers to clear the water. Like there's all this equipment and it's horrendously complicated. And I helped him build this pond. I learned a lot of things. And back then when I was actually trying to think about how to start an online business, that was my main goal was, what's a complex topic that I could make simple? And so I started that business. And now I have a sales employee and she does all the sales. And there's you know close to half a million dollars US in sales on that little website every year. And I think the core of that business is taking things that seem complicated and people have lots of questions and making it simple and then offering things for sale that solve those problems for people. And if you can solve problems for people and make them trust you, they will buy stuff from you. That's, so that's number five, like what complicated stuff do you know that you can make simple for other people? And if you're thinking about starting an online business, go check out my other video. Maybe I'll put a link in the description to that one. I made that actually quite a while ago, maybe a couple years ago now, but it still all applies. So those five questions will hopefully get your mind working on it and finding that thing inside of you. Everybody has this unfair advantage. Everybody has things they love. I think it's really important for INFJs to find that. And if you do that thing and you do it well, which you will because it's your unfair advantage, literally you, you will have no competition. And you know what I mean, because there's certain people in the world and it's almost like nobody can compete with them. Um, like for example, like you take somebody like Oprah. If Oprah were to die today, it's almost like there's nobody that can just replace Oprah. Oh, we're just gonna we'll put a new Oprah in there. Like she is unique, she is doing something, her fans love her for a specific thing that nobody could ever replace. You know, there's lots of examples of people like that. But, you know, like say if you go to university and you become an engineer and you're just an average engineer because it's not something you love or let's say you become a lawyer and you were to die as a lawyer, you know, chances are there's a zillion lawyers that can take your place. And I think that for me is one way I look at it. In what way can you be irreplaceable? 
What, what specific knowledge do you have that you can share with people that really nobody else could or very few people, I guess? And so once you kind of know that thing, you just start putting it out into the world and that's really key. You just start making stuff. So let's say you know about a certain topic and you want to do education type stuff or like talk on YouTube. The first step is to actually make some videos and the first ones might not be that great. Or let's say you're just really good at mechanical stuff let's say, but you also really love motorcycles. So you combine these two things and now maybe you're gonna build um, like a custom motorcycle. You actually have to do it and then you gotta put it out there in the world. And putting it out in the world is almost just as important as doing it. And I'm not to say that you have to make money off that thing, but I'm, I'm saying it's pretty convenient if you do. And so it seems like the best people in the world are combining that thing they love and then it's almost like the money just comes. You know what I mean? Kind of a closing thought here. I want to remind INFJs this. You are not the norm. And so you look at yourself and you think that's not valuable. That information's not valuable. That is too easy. Um, nobody cares about that. And the reality is it's not true. If you are an INFJ, I think it's safe to assume that your mind ticks a lot different than a lot of other people. And chances are that you have a lot more to offer than you think. Uh, you got a lot more knowledge in there. INFJs are really good at collecting knowledge, sort of blazing paths forward and getting really good at, at things. But you know, INFJs also, like I said, have the potential to get stuck and not do anything, almost like failure to launch syndrome. So I think part of that is you have to remind yourself that you actually have these things. You know stuff that other people don't know, you have skills that other people would value. So it really is about finding that thing. And no matter how obscure it is, it's amazing what you can do. Like, I'm just gonna use this as an example. Actually, I did a video on them. Look back in my videos. I did a, I'll put a link in the description for this one as well. It's a short documentary. It's one of my passionate nobody's videos on a drummer. Basically, he loved to drum on buckets. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. Um, and so he busks outside downtown Kelowna. So we live in kind of this valley with all these lakes and it's quite a touristy place in the summer. So he would play all these, this bucket drum set he made up. Um, go check out the video. And people would pay him money to do that on the streets. And it was a perfect example of something that he just loved to play drums and people were paying him, but he was really good at it. And so what's interesting is since I made that video, He's now even progressed further. He got this 80 school tour just recently, going to all the schools in British Columbia and almost like a performer for like, you know, like the school puts all the people, like an assembly, you know, from school. And then he performs with all these bucket drums that he's got and then gives this kind of motivational speech. Anyway, 80 schools in, in the province of BC, so I'm in Kelowna, BC, Canada, and he's making like really good money. I won't say how much money he's making, but he's making a lot of money. He's making a lot of money to do one school and he's got 80 of them. And I just think it's the perfect example of here's somebody, he likes drums, he likes performing, but he also likes, you know, just banging on stuff. So he kind of makes this his, his own career out of, out of nowhere. And there's nobody else like him. Like there's nobody that can replace what he's doing once he's doing it. So just an example of somebody that I thought that was actually killing it in that area. So anyways, guys, I hope that was motivating for you as an INFJ to kind of, to look inside yourself and find that thing that you can do, that, that unique, specific knowledge that's inside of you. Um, Another thing I'd recommend if you're interested in this topic is there's this tweet storm that actually Naval made. So it's at Naval on Twitter, N-A-V-A-L. Um, he has this tweet storm on how to get wealthy. And it's a really interesting thing. And he kind of explains the difference between money and wealth. And there's a, there's a difference, by the way. And wealth is different than money. Um, some great ideas there on how to start businesses as well. You know, I could go a lot more into business stuff. I'm trying to decide really like what people want to hear on this channel. As long as you can get over that whole perfectionist sort of trap, 
we can be extremely efficient, successful people that can generate this freedom for ourselves, which I think brings about happiness. And I think that's what it's all about, is giving yourself the space to exist without having to do things that you really don't want to do. I think that's really the secret to INFJ happiness. Anyway, I hope you found some value out of that. Put your comments below and uh, let me know what you thought. All right. Have a good day. Bye.